good to come your way again. My name is Ms. Wata, and then today we'll have a lesson in science. We'll look at diversity of matter, and under diversity of matter, we'll talk about materials. Materials. Okay, children, by the end of today's lesson, you should be able to identify the uses of everyday materials and link their uses to their properties. I'll take that again. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to identify the uses of everyday materials and link the uses to their properties. Okay, so let us go through our keywords to help us understand the lesson better. We have two keywords. Our first keyword is materials. Materials. So let us look at the definition for materials. They are the things from which useful things can be made from. So materials are the things from which useful things can be made from. For example, shoes, furniture, cars, bags, etc. So these are the useful things that are made from the materials or from things. Okay, so our second keyword, we have properties. Properties. They are the characteristics that can be used to describe a material. So the characteristics, same as the features, something that differentiates something from another. So properties are the characteristics that can be used to describe a material. Example, rough, hard, smooth, soft. So when something is smooth, it will help us describe the type of material that we have. I hope you got that. Okay, so on our screens, we can see different types of objects or kinds of objects. So examples of objects made from everyday materials. So these things are made from materials or they are made out from something. So we have the bottle or the water bottle. We have clothes. Again, we have baskets. We have books. We can see football and then a wooden chair. So these are objects or things that we get from materials so let us look at the different materials their properties and then their uses so materials can be in form of so many things as i said so examples of materials are knife television mirror spoon Anything at all that is around you, everything that you find around you, you can turn that as material. So the everyday materials around us have some properties which make them different from each other. Yes, so it's the property that differentiates these materials. Therefore, the type of material used for a certain product depends on its property. Yes, so the type of material used for a certain product depends on the property. So it depends on the property such as hardness, the texture of the material, the hardness of the material, the softness. Is it bendable? Can you bend it in so many ways? Is that okay? You can bend it sometimes without breaking. So is the material bendable to be able to make the, the, the object or the material you want? 
So, we talk about the roughness or the smoothness of the material. Is that okay? So, in this lesson, we will learn about the uses of everyday materials and link the uses to their properties. There are so many materials that we can talk about. But for the sake of this lesson, we'll discuss about three of these materials and then look at the rest in our previous lessons. So let us look at the different types of materials that we have. We have the wood, the metals, we have paper, we have leather, cotton, we have rubber and then glass. So these are the different types of materials where we get objects from. So I'll take the materials again. We have wood, metals, paper, plastic, leather, cotton, rubber, and then glass. So this lesson will look at wood, plastic, and then glass. Our first material is wood. Wood. So look on your screens. You can see different types of woods, the locks. The woods has been cut into so many shapes and sizes. So it's through this wood that we get different objects from. Okay, so the above picture displays wood that has been cut into locks. As I said, so some things we use daily are made of wood. Yes, there are so many things around us that are made from wood. So wood is a hard material and does not break easily. Wood can be polished to become smooth. Is that okay? So the wood is what? Hard and it does not break easily. And then it can be polished to become smooth. Alright, so let us look at the properties of wood. As we said, wood is a solid matter. This is where the hardness comes in. So wood is a solid matter. It means it is what? It is hard. And it is hard and what? Strong. Because it does not break easily. Now let us look at the uses of wood, what we can use wood for. In our picture, we see something on our screen. What do we see? Okay, so this is a furniture. You can use it in the garden or in the hall. It is a wooden furniture because it is made from wood. Very beautiful as we can see. So we have the chairs and then the tables. Okay, let us look at the next use of wood. So wood can be used as firewood. Some people use wood as fire is okay they use it in cooking especially when you go to the forest you can use the firewood to cook very very useful and then our next use of wood as the wooden door. So we can see two different wooden doors on our screen. Very, very strong 
wooden doors. You can't easily break these doors because woods are polished and then they are also what hard so it will be very difficult to break and then our next use is tables and chairs so woods can be used for tables and chairs in our classrooms in our homes we have wooden chairs and tables all over. It is because of the what? The wood that makes it possible for the carpenter to produce the tables and the wood and the chairs. So it's because of the hardness of the what? Of the wood that we are able to get our chairs and then our tables and the other objects that we looked at. So our next object is the cardboard. The cardboard. So we have cabinets in our kitchen. We have the cardboards in our rooms. When you come to school, we have the cardboard in the classroom. Yes. So cupboards and cabinets are made from woods yes and then we have the cricket bats those who love the game of cricket yes they are used in hitting the ball so they are made from what wood and then we have the wooden bed is that okay? So you put your bed on this beautiful wooden bed and then you have a very, very sound sleep. Yes, some of you like sleeping a lot. It's because of wood that makes it possible for us to have this wooden bed to sleep on. We have different uses as well. We have your pencils and then some that we've not mentioned or we've not seen in this lesson. Look around and then write down other uses of wood. When we come on Zoom, we'll discuss about that. Okay, let us move on to our next material. So our next material is the plastic or we have plastics. Again, we come across plastics everywhere in schools and in our homes. Okay, they are very, very important. Whatever you do, you need a what? Something associated with what? Plastic. Now let us look at the properties of plastics. Plastics do not corrode. Plastics do not corrode. Corrode means it does not rust. Is that, is that okay? It doesn't rust. So you can have plastic for a longer period of time without rusting. So corrode means it does not rust. Is that okay? So you can have plastics for a longer period of time they do not rust mm -hmm. okay so plastics are flexible and highly durable they are flexible when something is flexible it is what it is not rigid it can move it can be formed in so many ways so plastics are flexible and highly durable. When something is durable, it is of high quality. Okay, so plastics are waterproof. They are waterproof. This means that water do not get to them easily. And then they cannot conduct electricity. Plastics do not conduct electricity. 
It means that electricity can't pass through them. Is that okay? So when you have anything made from plastic, and then you are working around a socket or anything related to electricity, electricity can't pass through. All right, so let us look at the uses of plastics. The uses of plastics. Okay, so we have the dust bin, the plastic dust bin. It is made from plastic, okay? The waste bins, they are made from what? Plastics. That is where we dispose our waste in. Is okay. All these types are made from plastics. Our next example, we have screwdrivers with plastic handles. Yes. So why do you why do you think we have plastic handles? Okay, we have plastic handles because plastics cannot conduct electricity. Do you remember the properties of plastics? Yes, they do not conduct electricity. They are used as insulators. Yes, insulators are materials which cannot conduct electricity. So plastics are what? Insulators. They prevent electricity from passing through the metal. Our next example is the pipe. So we can see pipes on our screens. So pipes are made of plastics because they are waterproof and do not rust. These are the properties. Is that okay? So it's due to the properties that makes the material strong. Let us move on. Our next example, we have the plastic bottles and bowls. These are common around us. You can see it everywhere that we go. So we have the plastic bottles and then the plastic bowls. They are all made from plastics. Good. Okay, let us move on to our last type of material. We have the glass. The glass. Some things we use are made from glass. We see glass everywhere around us. Glass is transparent. When we say transparent, it means that we can see what? True. Can see through the glass a reflection of whatever is in front of the glass. Let us look at the properties of glass. So, glass is hard and brittle. It is hard and brittle. So, brittle means that it is liable to break easily. It means that when tempered with or when pressure is forced on the glass, it can what? Break. That is what? Brittle. It means that it can what? Break easily when stress or pressure is applied on it. Good. Our first example of an object that can be made from glass is the luva blades or the luva frames. Yes, this is very common when you come to school. It is everywhere around us. Even in your homes, you have the luva frames or the blades. They are made from glass because it is what? The glass is hard and then brittle. You know that when you apply much force on the duver frames, it can what? Break. 
So you don't have to play with what? Glass. Okay, let us move on to our next example. We have the mirror. Mirror, yes. So mirror is made from what? Glass. Or we can get mirror from glass. And then we have the windscreen. You can locate the windscreen on a car. Is that okay? The wider part of the car. That's what in front of the car. That is where the driver or the passengers in the car see through. So the windscreen is made from glass. And then we have spectacles. Spectacles. Yes, the frame of the spectacle is made from what? Glass. So we see through the what? The glass. And then you know that when you temper or you apply much pressure on the frame or the glass, it will do what? It will break. And then we have the glass. Okay. The glass cup we use in what? In drinking our water, our juice, wine. Yes. When you don't handle the glass very well and then it falls, it might what? Break. So in all ways, we need to handle our glasses very, very well. Even though they are hard, they are also, they are also what? Brittle. They are liable to break easily. All right, children. Well, we have come to the end of today's lesson. What have we learned so far? We've looked at materials and the properties of materials. We also looked at the types of materials. That we looked at three types of materials. That's the word, the wood, plastics, and then the glass. We've looked at the different objects we get from these materials. In our next lesson, we'll look at different types of materials as well. Don't forget to come on Zoom to have a recap on this lesson. I'll come your way again. Be safe and bye.